Now I'd like to get us started with our official presentations for the day. So first, it's my privilege to introduce a video presentation from His Excellency, Mr. Jai Berai, Minister of Education from the Royal Government of Bhutan. So His Excellency earned his master's degree in business administration with a major in accounting and finance from the Maastricht School of Management in the Netherlands. He's held the post of Chief Leadership Officer and Principal Trainer for the AMG Group of Business before joining politics. He served the Royal Government of Bhutan in the public service for over 10 years from 2012, 22 to 2012 as a Head of Finance in the Ministry of Health and a Head of Finance at the Royal University of Bhutan and as Chief Finance Officer in the Ministry of Agriculture and Forest. He's also worked as a science researcher and consultant for the Royal Government of Bhutan and other corporate entities. He's been a national and regional consultant and trainer in the field of project management, leadership development, strategic management, financial management, fiscal planning and forecasting. The Education Minister also tells us his great reverence for writers and is an avid reader. And some of his other passions include helping communities, volunteering, collecting books, magazines and articles um, and gardening, meditation and photography. So I'd like to go now to the Minister for his remarks. Thank you. Your Excellency Dr. Hang, Minister for Education, Cambodia. Your Excellency Ms. Indra, Ministry of Women and Children Affairs for this. Dr. Sandro, Chair, Board of Directors, Ane. Mr. Ming, Deputy Regional Director, UNICEF, East Asia Pacific Region Office. Mr. Seguro, IMG, Regional Director for UNESCO Bangkok. Ms. Evelyn D. Santiago, Executive Director, Ane. Other dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to participate and express few of my thoughts today in this August gathering. We missed this opportunity for last two years because of COVID. However, I would like to express my appreciation to Arnik, particularly Ms. Alvin de Santiago for your leadership for organizing this wonderful conference. I was in fact trying my best to join like those days in Vietnam, but due to COVID, we are not able to get together. Even if we are not able to meet physically using technology, I'm very happy that this conference is being organized. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it is apt and right that this year's topic that you have chosen for discussion is Young Children in Crisis, Addressing the Impact of COVID-19, Climate Change and Environmental Degradations. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take all of us to look around our world and see what's happening and where we stand today and now hereafter what we all as an educationist, as a policymaker, as a leader, what should we do? How should we go about? Where should we take our future leaders? How should we educate them? These are some of the critical thoughts that we have to put in now. As you all know that with pandemic, global paradigm shift has happened. But whatever we have put in so far has been challenged thoroughly by the virus COVID-19. Now, geopolitical scenarios are changing. Volatility, uncertainty are looming and creating a cloud in our future. At the same time, unemployment, failure of the economy, and so many other dynamics are changing in the world. These are being further aggravated by not only economic and political crisis, but also environmental and climate change. In such scenario, what should we do? Our forefathers have saved our futures and we are here today. What shall we do? Should we go by the rules and thoughts and imagination of our current status? Or should we now rethink, redevelop and re-engineer and recreate future for our children? This is the right time, right place and right platform for us. So those who are gathered together, both online and offline, I would like to request, please have a thought on these lines. What shall we do? How should we make or how should we create heaven out of hell? These are the thoughts that I think we all have to put in in this August gathering, the gathering of our minds, gathering of our knowledge, skills and wisdom. Last but not the least, just to update about my country, 
under the benevolent and dynamic leadership of His Majesty, we are able to face this pandemic bravely. At least we all know that challenges were there. But despite of so many challenges, at least we are encouraged, we are guided and laid this end. Yes, absolutely, this pandemic, COVID-19, has impacted a lot to education family. We all know that we had tough time taking care of our children, especially primary and ECCD going children. We had tough time conducting our high stakes exams despite of all those things. At least now we are able to pass through this terrible and difficult time. And then we are very happy that better and beautiful days are dawning as the time passes. Similarly, all our developmental partners also supported a lot. And then in a similar context, all our regional friends, regional countries might have faced the same skill or more problem. And then under your particular dynamic leadership and also leadership of your government, head of the government, you are able to sail safely out of this long time. But then hereafter what? What should you do? And this is the right place and platform to which we all are putting our brains, minds, thoughts, and also our wisdom to move, take our children from this end to the next paradigm. Once again, I would like to wish all our partners, all our team gather together today to keep our education our fraternity on board and take our future generations to a better place. I wish you best of luck and thank you. Great. Thank you so much to the Minister for his inspiring remarks and that call to action to us all to re-engineer the future for our children and educate our future leaders. So thank you so much again for those inspiring remarks. So next, I'd like to introduce the Honourable Mr Wilbur Jaime, Minister of Education, Republic of the Marshall Islands, and he's going to join us today live. So his, ex his Excellency has a graduate certificate in international health from Boston University, a Bachelor of Education from the Uni University of Guam, and Associate of Arts from the College of Micronesia. His Excellency has held many senior government roles in the Marshall Islands, including as Minister of Education, Sports and Training, Minister in Assistance to the President, and Minister of Internal Affairs since 2012. He's also been Secretary of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, Assistant Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Energy Planner, Ministry of Resources and Development, Instructor, General Equivalency Diploma, and has been in the College of the Marshall Islands. In the 1990s, he also worked as a Curriculum Development Specialist for the Ministry of Education and also as an elementary classroom teacher. <laughs> He's a member of numerous committees and boards, including the National Board of Education, College of the Marshall Islands Board, Board of Regents College of Micronesia, Health and Social Affairs Committee and Public Affairs Committee. He's also let us know that in his spare time, he enjoys fishing, conversations, community services and cooking. So over to you, Minister, and thank you so much for sharing some of your precious time with us today. I will not have to Okay, uh, thank you, Nicole, for the uh, remarkable just, uh, introduction. Um, so I, I wanna say, uh, you've introduced myself, but I wanna say uh, hi, Yahweh yeah, to you all. And uh, my apologies to you and uh, the uh, distinguished ministers Excellencies and uh, distinguished guests and honorable member of the ARNIC. Uh, I must apologize. My voice is not cooperating with me today. So if I may ask uh, one of my staff to read my statement to you, uh, would that be acceptable? Of course, of course. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the people and the government of the Republic of the Marshall Islands, I extend warm greetings of Yahweh to each and every one of you. It is a pleasure to speak with you at this regional conference on early childhood. And so I take this opportunity to thank you once again, for extending the invitation to my office. Ladies and gentlemen, the world that children find themselves in today is a world reeling from health, economic and social impacts of COVID-19 and the ongoing effects of climate change as felt keenly in our Pacific Atoll nation, the Republic of the Marshall Islands. 
When the pandemic struck in 2020, we heeded warnings from WHO and implemented measures like border control, intensive care unit beds, and isolation units, and rolling out COVID-19 vaccines. We have since reported 18 confirmed border cases and no death. We remain vi 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 vigilant and aware of the risk, especially in the outer islands, where shortage of health workers, facilities, and services can come into play if COVID-19 hits. In the face of these challenges, we have continued with support from partners such as World Bank and UNICEF in, the act in actioning our commitment to what we call Inoki Pe'enriruwelebul, nurturing our children to flourish. To achieve this, the continuum of care, collaboration, a whole of the government, whole of the community approach, up to one in three children under five years of age in the Pacific are stunted, placing them at the more risk of dying from illness, having underdeveloped brains and lower educational and income potential. Across the Pacific, children experience relatively high levels of violence in their homes and in some Pacific countries, up to 85% of parents report using physical discipline against children. Available data for the region also shows that the net enrollment for early childhood education is 65.8%, indicating a significant proportion of young children not enrolled. The government recognizes, the RMI government recognized that early moment matters for all children. Thus, careful dedicate and dedicated investment matters. We take our obligation seriously as a government to invest in human capital now more than ever after two long years of COVID-19. As a member of the multi-sectoral Pacific Regional Council for ECD, we commit to the Pacific Call for Action on ECD, a nine-point action agenda outlining investment and collaboration for progressing ECD in our region. UNICEF serves at, as the secretary for this council, and we remain grateful for their support alongside stakeholders, including the Pacific Regional Organizations and bilateral agencies in, and World Bank. We also look forward to gathering, to gathering the 15 Pacific member countries of the Pacific Regional Council for ECD for our bil bilennial Pacific ECD Forum in early 2023 to chart our progress on our commitments to ECD. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that if we do not give children the best start in life, we risk more families going into poverty and disadvantage, and that can span generations, undermining the strength and stabilities of our society. Our own national ECD discussion have brought to light the need for understanding children's rights, the cause of inequities, and streamlining ECD-related programs into a national framework for action. Our National Strategic Plan 2020-2030 states that resilience in all key dimensions, environmental, social, economic, and others, is the overarching strategic priority. Without a question, ECD can help drive the resilience agenda. RMI children are highly vulnerable to climate change, related shocks and can suffer, suffer irreversible impacts affecting earning potential and intergenerational poverty. Climate change manifests in the form of sea level rise, drought, food insecurity, climate driven mi migration, heat waves and more damaging storms. Risk related to climate change for young children <laughs> in RMI include malnutrition and stunting, vector borne illnesses, disruption in family, community, and learning life, emotional trauma, toxic stress, and respiratory issues. These then contribute to a long-term risk, including the weakening physical and immune system, chronic, chronic respiratory disease, cognitive in impairment, vulnerability to violence, and increased burden on the ecosystem system and climate. A recent World Bank study showed the rights of sea level rise in our atoll nation are projected to endanger 40% of existing buildings in our capital, Madro. 
with 90%, 96% of the city at risk of future flooding induced by climate change. This is the real impact of climate change faced by our communities, our young children, their families, and caregivers. As a Pacific country and party to the global climate change negotiations, we believe ECD must be elevated as a fundamental issue, climate change policy, and that financing mechanism for resilience and adaptation of vulnerable communities include funding to boost ECD programs. We have responded <laughs> by ensuring the share of ECD in our government budget allocation, allocation meets the international benchmark of 1% of GDP. We recognize that 90% of this budget rests on the Ministry of Health and commit to ensuring more multi-sectoral spread of the budget support. We are also working to ensure that the share of public education funding to the youngest meets the international benchmark. To ensure that our policy framework are in place, RMI is one of eight Pacific countries currently developing their national ECD policies with UNICEF and, with, and, and Rice Institute supplemented by the cost action plan and monitoring frameworks. We have completed a high level interview, interviews on ECD, mapping ex existing ECD services and preliminary round of community consultations on ECD. This year, our ECD situation analysis is due as well as the drafting of the ECD policy instrument. We want to better, out we want to better outcomes for our young children and we recognize the better outcome required the community to work together at the outset and decide together how we can do better for our young children and their families. Earlier this year, the government, the RMI government and World Bank launched a $27 million project to increase the coverage and quality of child, childhood health, education, and social protection. As the challenges mount, so does our resolve to work strategically and collaborate for outcomes of our young children, children's to serve. Collaboration, partnership, and shared learning are always welcome. And I look forward to opportunities to learn more from this conference and fellow participants. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome opportunities for sharing clear evidence on good practices, knowledge sharing, capacity building across countries, and multi-sectoral collaboration to bring together health, education, social welfare, finance, women and children for, ECD, for the ECD agenda. To our stakeholders, past, present, and future, we look forward to progressing together, secure, brighter, healthier, and more productive futures for the young children and their community. I thank you. Great, thank you so much uh, for those remarks. And Minister, um, thank you for joining us and we send you our best wishes. We hope that you're feeling better soon. Um, but thank you so much for those for that statement. And it really does um, you know, connect very closely to many of the, the issues that we've been covering in the conference so far, the importance of ECD for resilience building, the need to link climate finance with investment in ECD, and also, of course, that issue of sea level rise, which is which is so you know important, particularly in affecting affecting Pacific Island nations. So, thank you so much for those inspiring words and for and for spending time with us today. Um, and yeah, and really connecting some key points that we've been discussing uh, in the conference so far. So, thank you so much, Minister.